Hi, I'm Nusrat Rahman. Um, I work at Venashiki, which is a patent and trademark attorney's firm based in Guildford. So just a little bit about myself. I did my bachelor's in electronic engineering from Hong Kong, and I worked as an in-house patent engineer in Hong Kong in a company specializing in internet routers, Peplink. And then I started my formal training as a patent attorney when I moved to the UK. So just uh, an overview of what I'm going to speak about today. Um, an introduction to all sorts of intellectual property, um, anything to protect your ideas or any of your products, methods or whatever. And then patentability requirements. Um, and then I'll put some more focus on software patents and technical effect of software patents and machine learning and AI. So um, these are the few forms of uh, intellectual property protection that are available. So the first one is copyrights, which protects the expression of an idea, not the idea itself. So it will protect, uh, for example, literary works, dramatic works, musical and artistic works. And so it does fall, with, software does fall within copyright protection because it, it's sort of a literary work. Um, and then there is know-how or trade secrets, which is confidential information or specific skills that you acquired uh, while working in a particular area. So for example, the Coca-Cola recipe is a trade secret. Then there's designs, which protects the outlook, so the shape and appearance of a product. Um, rather than the underlying fun functionality. Trademarks protects brands, uh, logos, and any symbol that distinguishes your product from others. And then comes patents, which protects a technical invention, which is a technical solution to a technical problem. So patents, um, yeah, as I said, it protects technical inventions, and it lasts 20 years from the date of filing of the patent. And once you have a patent for an invention, you can stop third parties from infringing your patents in respect of making your invention, using it, selling it, importing it, or even keeping it for uh, using or making or whatever, um, especially for commercial purposes. And patents are territorial, so you have to file in different countries wherever you would want to protect your invention. So. For software, you can protect it with patents or copyrights, or both. Um, so for copyright, few pros are that you don't have to file anything. Once you write a software yourself, it's automatically protected by copyright, and it's free because you don't, there is no filing process. But the disadvantages of copyright protection is that you need to prove that someone copied your code in order to prove infringement. So if they come up with a similar code doing the same function, but they did not copy yours, they would not be infringing your code. Um, and therefore, the protection is very narrow. So since it's only protecting the expression of your idea, um, it won't protect the idea itself. So if someone else's code does exactly the same thing, but it's not written in the same way, it won't be infringing your product or your software. And you also need to prove ownership to, to be able to sue someone. So you need to prove that you're the first one to write your own code. And if you don't have proper documentation recording that thing, you won't be able to prove that you own the code, even if someone copies it. And then you can protect your software with patents, which, um, so the pros is that the, you can protect any software that performs a similar function. So anyone writing any code, regardless of whether they copied it or not, if it does the same function, you can stop them from doing it if you have a patent. Um, they don't have to copy it. They, they're still infringing your uh, software, even if they don't copy it and come up with it themselves. And then there's some tax relief. So tax relief is basically if any revenues you're making it making from your patented products, you can the tax you have to pay on it is a little less than unpatented products. But the disadvantages of patents are that 
it can take years for a patent to be granted because the examination process, once you file it, it, it takes a few years to be granted because uh, the examining process is very long. And since you have to file in each country separately, it can be expensive. And it, you must disclose the invention to the public in the sense once you file it, it will definitely automatically be published after 18 months. So you can't stop, you can't keep it a secret. So the requirements for getting a granted patent. Number one, it has to be novel. So it has to be new. It can't be disclosed uh, before your filing date by you or anyone else. Um, it has to be inventive. So it can't be obvious and obviousness is uh, determined in various ways like if two or more uh, documents can be combined to come up with your invention. If a skilled person can come up with your invention with the knowledge they already have, like common general knowledge, then your invention won't be patentable. So it's considered non-inventive. And then there's this issue of technicality. So your invention have, has to be technical, a technical solution to a technical problem, which might be the most uh, common problem that we see with software patents, which I'll talk about more. Um, and then there are some exclusions to patentability. For example, methods of doing business, mathematical methods, and computer program. But it's not as simple as it sounds. So this is the exact section of the UK patent law, which says that a program for a computer might be excluded from patentability. But there is a caveat. And others include the discovery or scientific theory, literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic works, or any mental act, scheme, rule, business methods, presentation of information. And computer program is listed within it. But then there is a caveat that it says that these are only excluded to the extent that the patent relates to that thing as such. So what does as such mean? This is a very important caveat and often people miss it and therefore there is a misconception that software can't be patented. It can be patented. So as such means that a new idea that would otherwise be excluded from patentability, for example, if it's a business method or artistic work or presentation of information, it doesn't automatically become patentable just because you're applying it in software. And uh, it also means that if it is otherwise patentable, for example, it's a, if it's a technical thing, then it doesn't become non-patentable just because it's um, applied in software. So for example, this is a view from the UK Patent Office that, so if, the, if your software is um, providing an improved control for a car braking system, it's probably likely to be patentable just because it's technical. But if, if your software is providing a, an improved accounting system, that counts as a business method. And just because you're coding it doesn't make it technical. Um, so that, that's basically the view. So what does this technical effect mean? So these are some examples of things that are considered to be more technical, like image processing, controlling hardware, um, improved memory reduction in bandwidth, and uh, yeah, so as long as it has a physical effect in the real world, so for example, even data communication, you're sending something, receiving something. So those are considered to be technical. And some things that are less technical is presentation of information that does cover graphical user interfaces. Just because your uh, website looks nice doesn't mean it's inventive, for example. Um, financial methods. Um, accounting uh, methods and things like that, administrative methods, mathematical methods, aspects relating to subject matters of perception. So if, it, uh, if it's only technical, uh, the invention is that it provides a specific perception to a user's mind, it does not make it technical. And then business methods or uh, games, steps or rules of a game, these are less technical. So basically, why is technicality important? The, these are the steps that 
a patent examiner would go through when they see whether your uh, application should be granted or not. Um, so it, you need to have an inventive step and novel features, so the new features are considered each one by one and they see whether the new features, whether they have technical effect or not. So if they don't have technical effect, then they'll just outright ignore it. And if they do have technical effect, then they'll see whether the combination of the technical features are considered obvious or not. And it's seen from a perspective of a skilled person, which has a very big definition in the, uh, in the statute. But a skilled person is basically not inventive, but they know everything in that uh, field of technology. Um, so yeah, so it, these are the things that will um, decide whether your application should be granted a patent or not. So I'll talk about a few uh, soft, software inventions that were not considered technical and uh, that were not considered patentable. So there was this one case that was about an internet brand lottery. So basically, uh, when you have a lot internet lottery, you have random numbers and people can click it, uh, and then they either win or they don't win. But that's known. And this pattern said that instead of random numbers, they'll put brand logos so that those logos would mean something to the user. And um, th therefore, uh, it's invented, the application, applicant was saying. And then the patent office said that it's not inventive because displaying brand logos is a marketing strategy. So it's a business method. So that can't be technical. It's also a presentation of information. And it's not technical because the method of choosing the winner is still the number crunching done of the random numbers that are still behind the logos. Uh, and, that, and the visuals did not have any significance on the uh, result to be achieved. Therefore, this pattern was uh, not patentable and was rejected. And this other case was about graphical user interfaces. Um, so th this was about uh, a virtual keyboard which had two modes, English mode and an Arabic mode. So as you know, English is from left to right, but Arabic is from right to left. So there were two features. One of them was considered to be technical by the patent office, but the other wasn't. So the first feature, um, the display changed to match the direction of deletion. So basically, something only changed at, the, at how the user was looking at it. Um, that was considered to be non-technical because it was just a presentation of information. But then there was another feature where the function of the key, so the delete key, changed according to the operating language. So basically, I think the delete key became a backspace key. And because the function was changing, that's why this feature was considered to be technical and inventive. And this pattern was granted on that basis. And then let's move on to machine learning and AI. Uh, now it's a very new topic. And uh, from the cases that we have seen recently, um, the patent offices are more inclined towards uh, granting machine learning uh, and AI patents uh, compared to other software patents. So these uh, features, machine learning features, are considered to be technical if, number one, it is applied to a specific field of technology, um, or it's um, adapted to a specific technical implementation. So for example, it's like uh, working on the core AI. So examples of good technical applications include um, image, audio, or video processing, speech recognition, encryption, decryption, and application or like classification algorithms. And for example, this is an image processing machine learning algorithm. So when a cat, when you input the cat, picture in the model, it will say that it's a cat. And this was considered technical. Um, but on the other hand, if your machine learning al algorithm is just classifying text documents solely with respect to their textual content, this was considered to be more of a 
a linguistic effect rather than a technical one. So this was considered non-technical. So basically, so that was about technical applications. And then if your machine learning al algorithm is having a good technical implementation, so it somehow provides a technical effect to the internal functioning of a computer, then it can have technical character. So these are some examples of technical uh, implementations that can be performed using machine learning. And these are considered technicals. For example, like if the memory efficiency is better, reduced latency, or even like faster training of neural networks. So these are all considered technical. So in summary, um, software can be patentable. And the most important thing is to uh, like consider the function of the software and what are the benefits, the technical effects, what is the technical problem that you are addressing, and is it a technical problem or not, um, and then what is the technical solution that you are presenting. And uh, while drafting patterns, you need to take the, be careful of emphasizing on the technical features rather than the non-technical. So basically, patterns have part, um, descriptions, drawings, and then there are claims. And the claims give you the legal basis for protection. And that's the hardest part to draft. It has to be very to the point. You can't uh, describe it very uh, in many words. And um, we patent attorneys are, being, are always trained to learn how to draw better claims. Um, that gives you maximum protection and gives you broad protection. It's so that it's not too narrow, but at the same time, it's not so broad that it's not inventive and not novel and not technical. So we have to focus on the most technical parts of the invention. And yeah, so the, the key to getting software patents granted is to draft carefully.